Good morning. We have an almost full house today. How lovely. So nice to be back in our sanctuary, even if it is a smaller group. And for those watching from home, thank you for joining us and for uh, joining us in worship today. Just in case you didn't know, I'm Leanne Steinthorson. I know it's been a while since we've all seen each other, but it is certainly nice to be back. Now, we do have some COVID protocols in place here in the sanctuary, so just to be aware of those. Please stay in the seat you've been given. Even when we pass the peace, you will stay in your general area and not move about the sanctuary. At the end of the service, the usher will come and get you so that we can keep a six-foot distance leaving the building. So just stay in your seats, and she'll come along to get you. Uh, this morning, the announcements have been running on the overhead, but we do also have a minute for mission. Everyone belongs. That belief anchors our United Church. It's why your mission and service gifts support gatherings of people who are left on the margins of society and support education events that help us learn what we can do about it. Disability is one aspect of social justice the United Church is working on. Did you know that one in five Canadians live with at least one disability? That's 6.2 million people. Of these, 1.2 million can't afford devices, aids, or prescription medicine. People living with severe disabilities have half the income of those with none. Seniors are almost twice as likely to have a disability as people who are of working age. Disability is an issue that affects us all. It's why the United Church partners with people from other denominations to raise awareness. People like Anglican disability activist Linda Katzno, who is a widely considered a pioneer in the field. Linda has lived with a disability since she was in a car accident in 1973. At the time, she was a primary school teacher and loved her job working with children. After the accident, she wasn't sure she would be able to return to what she loved because the school wasn't accessible. Linda credits a committed principal and Board of Education superintendent for making the changes that would enable her to return to her job. I became a disability activist when I realized it takes political will to change society for the better. Our community is made stronger when we include people with disabilities. If people with disabilities were fully welcome, the world would be a richer place. It would be a place where there is hope and no fear, she says. Ideas of mutuality, inclusivity, and justice drive Linda's passion to make the world a better place for all. I don't want to be seen as a poor, pathetic person. I want to be seen as a child of God, she says. Your generosity supports events and education that help create healthy, strong, welcoming communities inside and outside the church. Communities where no one is left out. We are all valued as children of God. Let us build a world where everyone belongs. Make your mission and service gift for belonging today. Communion, that's what we're longing for. 
I've lighted, lit the candle, the Christ candle here, as a symbol of the light of Christ, which cannot be held back by distance, which shines in each one of us, no matter where we are. Our call to worship today is taken from Psalm 85, verses 8 and 10. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Let us pray. God of grace, be present with us as a church family and as we gather for worship, walking new paths. In the ever-changing and uncertain world where we find ourselves, help us to know and be assured of your unending power, love, and mercy. We know you are a good God who holds us in our anxiety and distress and celebrates with us in our joys. Calm our hearts and minds, and give us hope in you this morning and always. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. that song in my head for the last month and they say if you sing the whole thing in completion it will go away so I'm really hoping it worked so for a children's time today as you know we don't have children in our sanctuary at the moment we have no Sunday school during COVID um, so I have something a little different today September 21st 2021 was the United Nations International Day of Peace as stated on the UN website, in 2021, as we heal from the COVID-19 pandemic, we are inspired to think creatively and collectively about how to help everyone recover better, how to build resilience, and how to transform our world into one that is more equal, more just, equitable, inclusive, sustainable, and healthier. 
And this special day of world peace brought to my mind a song that I played over and over and over, much to the chagrin of my parents, when I was a youngster. It was released in 1971 by singer-songwriter Cat Stevens. Now, Cat Stevens converted to Islam, changed his name to Use of Islam, and stopped recording in the mid-70s. But the song was titled Peace Train. The song's about a train coming down a track, and they're encouraging everybody to get on board because it's a train of peace. And as a young girl, I had this great image of God as the engineer driving the train down the track, and Jesus with his robes a flapping and his sandals flapping, calling everybody to get on board as he was the conductor. Well, how cool was it to find out that World Peace Day this year, the UN released a new compilation track of the song Peace Train. So 50 years after its release, it is still relevant today, and in lieu of children's time, we're going to enjoy the video that the UN released with this song. about good things to come and I believe it could be something good has begun Oh I've been smiling lately dreaming about the world as one and I believe it could be someday it's gonna come Cause, Cause I'm, I'm on the edge of darkness there rides the peace train Oh peace train we take this country Come take me home again Now I've been smiling lately Thinking about the good things to come And I believe it could be Something good has begun Peace train sounding louder Slide on the peace train about the world as it is why must we go on hating why can't we live in bliss Come on, 
I'm camping on the peace train. Come on, the peace train. Mm -hmm. reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 and 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The next reading is from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So as I sat down to write this sermon... I was rudely interrupted by the barking of my neighbor's dog. Now, the dog is a new addition to our community, and he's not quite settled in to his new home. He barks whenever he's outside, which seems to be most of the time. Not a loud bark or a long bark, just a few deep woof, woof. And he settles for a few moments before trying his voice again. Woof. The intermittent barking continued. Bark a little, rest. Okay, back to writing the sermon. Woof, woof. Okay, not yet. Woof, woof. Oh, the peace of my neighborhood had been disrupted. The tranquility of our collective sleep had been interrupted, and I found my patience beginning to wear thin. Okay bit of an understatement. I was getting really annoyed. I wanted nothing more than to knock on the door of the offending dog's home and let loose with some choice words about his lack of civilized behavior. Then I shook my head and laughed at myself. Here I am dreaming of raining chaos down on the head of my neighbor while trying to write a sermon on peace. Let there be peace on earth. And let it begin with me. The Old Testament begins in a beautiful way with the creation of the universe. The water and land, sunshine and starlight, creatures of all shapes and sizes roaming the forest, and this beautiful garden called Eden. I can close my eyes and in my imagination see the vibrant colors of those flowers. I can taste the sweet fruits of the trees and feel the soft grasses under my feet, hear the chirping, growling, and splashing of the wildlife. It is a sensory garden of beauty and pleasure and such a magnificently peaceful way to start our understanding of God. Then Adam and Eve eat from the fruit of the tree of knowledge and all of the serenity of that beautiful place is lost and the chaos 
of the Old Testament stories begin. Now, as a child, I relished the stories of the Old Testament. There was always some big adventure, some wrong that needed to be righted, some punishment from on high. It was like one big Hollywood action film written centuries before Hollywood was even a place on the map. But in Sunday school, we saw a very scaled-down version of many of those stories. While David slayed Goliath, I never understood that that meant killed. I remember using my crayons in a coloring book and coloring a picture of baby Moses being left in a basket in the reeds. I had a romantic notion of how lovely it would be to be found by a princess and raised as he was in privilege. My child's mind overlooked the fact that other baby boys were being murdered to stop this one baby from reaching adulthood. So as I matured, I found myself disliking the stories of the Old Testament. There was too much violence, death, and destruction. While Noah, his family, and the creatures two by two escaped the floods, the rest of mankind and the creatures of the earth perished. And I truly believe I would have been one of those ones lost in the floods because I certainly couldn't live up to the standards that God had set for his people. Moses had to free the slaves because there was indeed slavery and people who lived in abject poverty and fear. The Old Testament stories were of a God who rained destruction and chaos down on those who disobeyed and held all mankind accountable for the actions of others. In a recent episode of the TV show Young Sheldon, the mother tries to smooth over the rough, the rough Im image of God in the Old Testament. She said, yes, he was angry then, but it becomes a lot more fun in the New Testament. Well, thankfully she's right, because the Im image of God is angry and judgmental unsettles me to this day. But in the Old Testament, there's also a promise a prophecy of peace to come. And we heard this prophecy in the Isaiah scripture reading this morning. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. Finally, something I could hold on to. A promise that things were going to get better. A promise that peace would reign. Now, of course, the pre Prince of Peace is the man we call Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the loving entity who taught compassion, patience, empathy, and action for good. Through his love and the love of his Father, we would be given the key to true love and peace. And so the New Testament, with its stories of a man who taught compassion and humility, kindness and faithfulness, helped me to ride out the storms of the Old Testament, knowing there was going to be a happy ever after. And therein lies the irony, because Jesus came and taught us to live lives of goodness, and yet the world is still a violent and frightening place at times. I mentioned to a friend who works in a fast food restaurant that I was doing a sermon on peace. And she said, boy, could we ever use that right now? Some days I don't want to come to work because people are so angry and nasty. How do we get so angry? And how do we find peace within ourselves so that we can project that calm outward to the world around us? There's a wonderful story of a king who was so tired of war and violence that he asked all of the artisans of his kingdom to give him a piece of artwork depicting peace that he could hang in his castle. On the given day, all of the artisans gathered to show the king their work. The king admired the carved statues of doves, the gold plate embossed with the, embossed with the olive branch, and paintings of calm scenes. One painting became the king's favorite. It was a depiction of a lake with crystal waters reflecting the trees and the clouds Finally, the king came to the last piece of artwork. It was a painting of a 
thundering waterfall with stormy clouds and lightning above it. The water was in turmoil, crashing over rocks. It hardly seemed like a peaceful scene until the king looked closer. There, behind the edge of the waterfall, on a jagged rock, sat a small nest where a bird was tucked in calmly with her sleeping chicks. The world roared and crashed around her, but in the safety of her nest, all was calm. In the face of the storm, there was peace. In the face of the storm, there can be peace. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, promised us that. So how do we find that calm and peaceful place in a world that seems to be constantly in turmoil? Well, our second scripture today gives us the answer. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And be thankful. If we believe in God the Father... If we live life as he has shown us through the actions and parables of his Son, if we are thankful and show our gratitude for the gifts we have been given, we will be granted peace. Does that mean we'll never get angry? Of course not. Even Jesus flipped tables of the money changers in the temple. But what it does mean is that we have been given a safe harbor. We are unconditionally loved Our human errors and frailties can be forgiven, and we are forever ever worthy in the eyes of our Lord. This pandemic has certainly frayed our nerves, made us nervous about being close to others, kept us isolated and alone, left us viewing the world through a TV screen that more often than not tells us the worst of things and not the best. It has separated us from our loving support systems our church family, and our friends. But we can find peace within ourselves by reflecting on the lessons that Jesus taught. We all have that spot of safety and calm tucked into our hearts, just as the little bird was tucked securely behind the waterfall. Our God is a compassionate Father, a loving being who can give us comfort in our sorrows, relief in our pain, a soft spot to land when the world seems too hard. We are told that as God's children, we are accountable to one another. We must show kindness and compassion, and through these deeds of goodness, we will find peace in our hearts. We can find simple pleasure in sharing some eye contact these days, or a smile with a stranger when you're outside without a mask, by offering a compliment or holding a door. We can pick up the phone and call someone, find something to laugh about together, and let the scary stuff fade into the background for a while. Or when you are feeling really alone, know that within each of us is that small nest of comfort put there by God for us to rest our weary hearts and find peace. Having peace within will reflect outwards and will infect all those who, with whom you interact. Now imagine if I had gone over to the neighbors in a fit of rage over his barking dog. And if I caused a scene and said mean things, oh, how awful it would be to continue to be neighbors. I'm glad I found that kernel of peace that God has given to me so that I didn't do something rash out of anger. Ideally, I would have gone over and offered to play with the dog or take him for a walk. And let's be honest, I'm terrified of dogs, so that was never going to happen. Instead, what happened is that a day later, the dog was gone. He'd only been visiting for a few days. Peace reigns again in my neighborhood. Relationships are intact, and life is good. I hope you all find the peace within and know where to find it when life gets difficult. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Amen.
time, of course, when we would normally take up our offering. The offering basket it was at the front door, and uh, people that I know, as they came in, had dropped off. Um, you can certainly leave a donation on your way out, but I know a lot of you are donating online and sending your checks directly to the church, and for that, we are very thankful. It keeps our doors open. It keeps the programs we support in the community going, so thank you for that. gifts of our donations, bless their use to the continued life work of Trinity United and the greater world in which we live. Amen. Now this is the lovely time when we get to pass the peace, and it's always been a favorite time of mine in church, because normally we would get up and circulate and visit it with one another. Of course, COVID doesn't allow us to do that, but it still does allow us to stand up from where we're sitting, to turn around to give a wave, a bow, uh, whatever you'd like to somebody across the room. So please join me in the passing of the peace. <laughs> Perhaps you're waving at somebody you haven't seen in a long time. That's kind of nice. And if you're at home, you could take this time to pick up the phone and call somebody, put their service on pause, and pass the peace with them. All righty. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Creator, Prince of Peace, we come to you a people open to learn the ways of love you teach. Help us to overcome our prejudices, our pride or insecurities, and to find the calm in the storm that we might see the beauty of your world revealed to us. We thank you for the many blessings you have given us and send our prayers for those who are hurting, those who are struggling, those who are lonely. We give thanks for the frontline workers and healthcare professionals who have been called on to have extraordinary strength during this pandemic. Their dedication is not lost on us who so appreciate it. 
we take time now to offer our own silence, silent prayers to you, Lord, that you may hear and answer. Let us join together in the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We leave here today people of faith, of peace, and of love. May we be guided through this next week and find opportunities to spread his word, his kindness, and his empathy. Look for the peace within that has been promised to each and every one of you, and let it lead you. Peace be with you, all of you, my friends.